Yeah. yeah. Good morning. As you can tell, if you can even see this, it's still dark. And it's raining. We are at the Horbury Bridge Visitorings. I'm just reading from that sign. And um, we're hoping today's going to be our last push to get us beyond the stoppage that's happening on Monday. It's Friday today, so we have got three days, but we're done. We want to be done today. Yeah. So we're going to try and do it. It's a long cruise. It's about seven and a half hours, maybe eight hours. Probably take us nine or ten, because we always go a bit slower than they predict. Yeah. But it's seven now, so we've got plenty of time. And we need, basically need to make it to the other side of Castleford Junction in order to be past the stoppages. Um, which realistically means we need to make it to Castleford Junction as a minimum. Um, and yeah, we need. And then we can do the rest of it tomorrow if we need to. Yeah, there's like a river section for about five miles that we're aiming to do after Castleford yeah. just to get us on a nice mooring. But it is raining and it's predicted to rain quite heavily tomorrow, which means water levels will be going up, which will make water river sections potentially more problematic. Hopefully, we don't run into any red sections today. <laughs> we should just get going. Yeah. That away, that away. You can't really see the hand. That away. And hopefully this one will come up soon. <clears throat> Tomorrow. <laughs> Don't come up. Tomorrow. Why are you in such a good mood? I'm not in a good mood. <laughs> All right, we're on our way. It's a mile and a half to the next lock, so I decide that George and I should ride on the boat for this first section. George is understandably not happy with my choice. We ride inside the boat to keep dry, so we don't manage to film anything, and George is very sad that he can't watch the world go by. As we descend the lock, Canal and River Trust workboat turns up behind us. We find out they're on their way to the Ripon Canal to carry out some winter maintenance there. It's only a short distance to the next lock, so I let George walk this bit. Michael is first to arrive, so he ties the boat up and sets the lock. The next section is river navigation, and the lock landing is down some slippery concrete stairs, so we get George on board before we descend. The workboat catches up with us, and the crew kindly give us a hand with the lock. The sun's rising, but we can't see it. The day is so dark and grey. We pass under the M1 motorway, and despite the wet weather, I'd much rather be cold and damp on this boat than travelling overhead in a line of traffic. The floodgates at Thorns are open, so we cruise straight into the next cut. At Thorn's Lock, a number of the paddles are out of action, so it takes a while, in the rain. As we approach Wakefield, we're aware there's a rather sharp turn we need to take off the river navigation through the floodgates. 
The flow of the river keeps moving our back end as we make the turn, so some acceleration is needed here. It looks like we're coming to a dead end as we approach the falling service point, but there's a bend in the navigation to the left which takes us to the lock. This is the end of the Calder and Hebel navigation. No more Calder and Hebel hand spike for now. We're pleased to see that the river on the other side of the lock is actually in the green. The workboat's still behind us, but some of its crew are travelling ahead by road to prepare the locks, so they kindly give us a hand again. We're now on the Wakefield branch of the Air and Calder navigation. The branch stretches from here to Castleford Junction, where it meets the main line of the Air and Calder navigation. Boats as long as 140 feet can travel on the Wakefield branch, so we have a feeling that the locks are going to be quite large from now on. Another sign that we're on a different navigation is the traffic lights on the locks. We're now approaching Stanley Ferry. Just look at the size of some of the boats moored here. We take the opportunity to use the services, then we head through Ramsden Swing Bridge. George and I are happy walking for a bit, seeing as we're not on a river section, and so Michael continues ahead slowly. But there's a problem. I can't get my waterways key out of the control panel once I've shut the bridge. It just won't budge. I try it in every position. Meanwhile, Michael realises I'm not following and stops to wait for me. Eventually, he even starts to reverse. Finally, after trying to remove the key for about 10 minutes, by turning it into every possible position, it suddenly releases and I'm sent flying backwards as it comes free. Such a relief.
I finally caught up with the boat. Michael takes the new aqueduct and I take the footbridge. At Stanley Ferry, two aqueducts carry the navigation over the Calder. Historically, there was a ford here, but when the Calder was deepened for navigation, the ferry was needed. And then a bridge was finally built in 1879. When we arrive at the next lock, we find a boat's already using it to head the other way. We're also delighted to discover that these locks are hydraulic and operated with push buttons. No more heavy gates and winding mechanisms for now. Yep, this lock is huge. And here are the beautiful buttons that operate it. It's still as grey as ever, but at least it's not raining. Just look at how big these locks are. Back on the Calder and Hebel, we were practically touching both ends. These are the moorings in the Fairies Hill Cut. This is Woodnook Lock, which is taking us back down onto the river for the two mile cruise to Castleford Junction.
We arrive at Castleford Junction and Michael drops me off at the lock landing. Unfortunately, the floodgates are closed. Behind us, the main line of the Air and Calder goes all the way to Leeds. This is quite an unusual lock. It's triangular in shape and has three sets of lock gates. Two lead down onto the river and one onto the cut. It's also huge. There are two boats waiting to come into the lock, but one is still filling up with water. As my waterways key is in the control panel, I'm stuck waiting for them until they're ready. Meanwhile, Michael continues to the next lock. By the time I catch up, a lockkeeper has arrived, so he lets me and George climb aboard and kindly locks us through. This is also the lock that's due to close in three days' time, so we're finally past the stoppage that we've been racing to for the last nine days. We are too exhausted to celebrate, especially as we have five more miles of river cruising and one more lock to pass before we can find a mooring. On the river, we pass a couple of huge CRT workboats. One's pushing a barge laden with materials and the other's carrying a huge crane. It looks like they're off to carry out some substantial work. This is the coal terminal at the Ferry Bridge power station. The old machinery is fascinating. The coal must have been lifted from the barges and carried up the series of conveyors to the power station. The plant closed in 2016 and only three of the eight cooling towers are still standing. There are high banks here on this lock landing, so I need to climb off the boat using the ladder. Poor George has to wait inside. But thank goodness for these hydraulic controls. And it's another really huge lock. Finally onto the visitor moorings where we plan to stay for at least two weeks, or all winter maybe. We are triumphant, but mainly we're just exhausted. I'm sorry we didn't record an outro for the vlog, we were just too tired. We hope you enjoyed this trip on the Calder and Hebel and Air and Calder. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell if you want to receive notifications. So yeah, and hopefully, I forgot what I was going to say, <laughs> we should just get going. Yeah. It's only a short distance to the next lock, so I just...